Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn algebra. Today is our lesson number 42. Today is our lesson number 42, day number 42. Here's the problem for today. We are doing right now, we are learning right now how to add and subtract algebraic expressions. Here's the problem. We are told to subtract. We are told to subtract 1 minus x plus x to the fourth minus x cubed plus x squared from x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x plus 5. These words that you see they are descending and ascending, they are sitting there from yesterday. Let's talk about that, what that means. Descending order. Descending order of exponents. Descending order of exponent means that, uh, for example, you see right here this expression, the second expression, is descending order of exponent. If the descending means it goes down. It starts with the exponent of 4, and then it goes to 2x cubed, then it goes to 3x squared, then it goes to 2x, and finally we have 5. What exponents do we have? We have it 5 here. We have an exponent of 0, believe it or not. This the question here is, here, what exponent does x have? It has an exponent of 4. What exponent does, does x have in negative 2x cubed? It has an exponent of 3. What exponent does x squared have? It has an exponent of 2. What exponent does 2x have? It has an exponent of 1. What exponent does 5? What exponent does x have in 5? But there isn't any bloody x here. Or is there? Yes, there is. There is an x here. We cannot see it. It's there. x raised to 0. x raised to 0 is 1 x raised to 0 is 1. Any number raised to 0 is 1. This is how a mathematician would write it. I'm going to say it again. This is a sentence which, which an equation, an equivalent term, an equivalent term for an equation in our language, in English, in your language as a matter of fact, not in mine, mine is a different language, uh, or for that matter in any language, the equivalent term for an equation is a sentence. In, in a language, when we speak a regular language, we speak sentences. Mathematicians do not speak sentences, they write equations. They state equations. Equations are their sentences. This is a sentence. I'm going to read this sentence in English language. And then I'm going to, then we're going to write the same sentence in mathematics. Let me first say the sentence in English language. Any, any number raised to an exponent of 0 equals 1. Any number. Well, how does a mathematician usually represent any number? With the letter n. n to them means any number, any old number. There, there are no restrictions on it. It can be positive, negative, fractions, could be anything. It, any number at all. Any number, n, n represents any number. Any old number raised to an exponent of 0 equals 1. You see, I just read it in English language, but this is how you write in mathematical language. The same sentence in mathematical language, which is, a, which is an equation, would be this. Any number raised to an exponent of 0 equals 1. So there is, a, there is an exponent of 0 here because this is just 5 times 1. So the exponents here, so the exponents here are going in decreasing order. We have an exponent of 4, we have an exponent of 3, we have an exponent of 2, we have an exponent of 1, and then we have an exponent of 0. Voila, you see? They are going down. They are in descending order. So this from yesterday is not correct. This is the descending order. This, as I said, this is from yesterday. This is descending order. What about a top guy? Let's talk about a top guy now, shall we? Let's talk about a top guy. We have an exponent of 0 here. You see, when you say 1, 1 is actually 1 times x raised to 0. Because x raised to 0 is 1, and 1 times 1 is 1. So here we have an exponent of 0. Here we have an exponent of 1, 
here we have an exponent of 4, here we have exponent of 3, and here we have exponent of 2. So we got the 0. Let's write this here. 1, 1 as in 1 times x raised to 0. So we have a 0, 1, 4, 3, 2. How is it arranged? Is it arranged in ascending order or descending order? It's not arranged in any order. It's just willy-nilly. Yeah, I know. I learned it willy-nilly. So now we have to put them in a proper order before we can do anything with it. Like terms have to be added together. Two unlike terms, we cannot add x to an x cube. We cannot subtract x to the fourth from it to x. We cannot do that. So here is the expression that we're subtracting from. We're subtracting from this expression. And underneath it, we're going to write the expression that we, we are subtracting. The, exp ex the expression that we're subtracting from goes on the top. The number that we're subtracting from subtracts Subtract seven from subtract seven from fifteen. The number that we are subtracting from goes on the top. Even though fifteen was mentioned later in the sentence, I said seven. I said subtract seven from fifteen. Fifteen was stated later in the sentence, and yet it goes on the top. And the number that we are subtract and the, and the number that is being subtracted in this case seven goes on the bottom. So the expression exp expression that we are subtracting from goes on the top, which is this expression from this expression. And the expression that is being subtracted, which is this part right here, is going to go on the bottom here. So here we have 1x, right, right here, positive 1x. Oh no, that's just, that's just 1, you see? That's not 1x, it's x raised to 0. Negative, negative x, again x raised to 1 if you like. x raised to 4 goes here. Negative x cubed, positive x squared. Now we can do our thing. And if you've been watching, this has a positive sign, this has a positive sign. And if you've been watching previous day's video, and hopefully you are, you must go in order, as I always remind you, then you know that in order to subtract one expression from the other, the sign of the bottom expression has to be changed. This positive becomes negative, this negative is going to become positive, this positive is going to become negative, this negative is going to become positive, and this positive is going to become negative. Now we are ready to subtract. Here we have x raised to fourth minus x raised to fourth. Well, x raised to fourth minus x raised to fourth, this whole thing drops out. Here we have negative 2x, negative 2x cubed, and a positive 1x cubed. A negative 2 and a positive 1 is going to give us a negative x cubed. Positive 3 and a negative 1, positive 3 and a negative 1 is going to give us positive 2x squared. Positive 2 and a positive 1 is going to give us positive 3x and the positive 5 and the negative 1 is going to give us positive 4. There you go, that's our answer. Our answer is negative x cubed. Let me confirm it. Let me verify this in my notes before. Oh, I missed out the negative in my answer. Negative x cubed. This negative is going to be there because this is negative 2. Negative x cubed plus 2x squared plus 3x plus 4 that's your answer now what I'm going to do is we're going to read now what we're going to do is we're going to redo this problem in a little bit more uh, in a little bit more traditional way the way that you might be used to seeing or the year even if you have not seen that way the way you most likely to encounter with your algebra teacher because this is this is uh, more of a baby way this is more of a way for somebody who's just starting out once you once you begin to get a hang of it you become more sophisticated you do it a little bit more grown-up way, which is what I'm going to do right now. I need the room, so instead of erasing this part, I want to leave it here so that we can compare the top part to the bottom, the second method that we're going to do on the top with the first method. So I need to erase this thing. Okay, watch what happens. So this expression goes first. x to the fourth, negative 2x cubed, positive 3x squared plus 2x. I don't want to run out of room here. I'm, I'm running out of room here. This is no good. I have to squeeze everything in here. And you will see why, I, why I'm hell-bent on squeezing everything on one line. You will see that in a second. So let's start again. x to the fourth. Negative 2x cubed. Positive 3x squared. Plus 2x. Plus 5. From this, we are subtracting this guy, x to the fourth, negative x cubed, 
negative positive x squared, negative x, and a positive one. I'm gonna get out of your way in a second. But that's what this is. This this top part is the same as this one, except it was written in a different format, it's a different method. Watch what happens. So first we have to write down this guy here the way it is. x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x plus 5. And now, in order to open this parenthesis, we have a negative in front of it. It's a negative 1 if you like. Not if you like, that's what it is. If the whole quantity is being multiplied by a negative 1. That's how we should look at it. A negative in front of it means it's a negative 1. Had it been something other than 1, it would have been did there. Had had, had we been meant to multiply this expression by 2, the 2 would have been here. Since there is nothing here, that means there is 1 here. It can be 0 because 0 times anything would have been 0. This wouldn't have existed. It's a 1. This has a, this has a positive sign. So what's going to happen? Watch what happens. As you open the parenthesis, this negative and this positive, this negative and this positive is going to become negative x to the 4th. You see? The positive x4 became negative x4. This negative and this negative, this negative and this negative is going to become positive. You see, negative x cubed became positive x cubed. This is going to become positive x cubed. That was a very sloppy. And then finally, not finally, but we're getting there. This positive is going to become po negative times positive is going to become negative. And then negative times negative is going to become positive. You see, this negative x, this negative x, it was a negative x, it became positive. And finally, this positive 1 is going to become negative 1 because negative 1 times positive 1 is negative 1. See, this positive 1 became negative 1. I'm going to erase this x to the 0 because it's annoying. Get rid of it. Now we can do our thing. Watch what happens. And we better get the same bloody thing. If we don't get the same thing, we could be in trouble. Because this is the answer, we already know it. So here we have a positive x, x to the fourth. Here we have a positive x to the fourth. And here we have a negative x to the fourth. Positive x to the fourth and negative x to the fourth, they're going to cancel out. Then we have negative, negative 2x cubed and a positive 1 x cubed. A negative 2 and a positive 1 is going to give us negative x cubed, right here. Then we have then we have a positive 3 x squared and negative 1 x squared. A negative 1 x squared and a positive 3 x squared it's going to give you positive 3 and a negative 1. Positive 3 and a negative 1 is going to give us the positive 2x squared. Right here. Then we have 2x and a plus x. 2x plus an x is going to give us 3x. And then finally, finally, this 5 here, is a positive 5, and a negative 1, positive 5 and a negative 1 is going to give us a positive 4, right there. You see, we get the same answer. We get the same answer at the end. Negative x cubed, plus 2x squared, plus 3x, plus 4. Doesn't matter which way we do it. I know by the time I finish doing it, it gets pretty crowded, but as long as you follow it, as long as you follow the work, uh, you'll be fine. And of course, the beauty of this technology is that you can always rewind and, and look back as to where this thing came from. And they are color coordinated, so it makes it easier. I'll see you tomorrow on day number 43, okay? Bye now.